For those of you who like to do kits and your own electronic hardware, um, you have to do through hole soldering. And I've watched several videos on it lately and a lot of their uh, videos are, well, some of them just have bad advice. Others of them don't give you the best uh, pr practices, the best tips and tricks. So I thought I'd go over that and share what I've learned over the past 50 years on doing through hole soldering. The tools you need today are a well tinned fine tip soldering iron and the equipment to keep the tip clean. I like to have a pair of tweezers to bend leads nicely. Uh, a little bit of sandpaper to clean leads. A nice fine solder. This is 0 0.8. 0 0.5 is also good. Various types of clamps to hold things in place. Clippers that will clip down against the board tightly. And then a damp piece of tissue to help hold components in place with my fingers and also to protect the components from overheating. Let's get started. The first step is to clean off everything and we'll start with the board. My favorite way to clean the board is a little bit of uh, scouring powder mixed with uh, dish detergent and an old toothbrush. Clean it off, make sure you don't do it too much and remove the, the markings here on this side. You want to get the oxide off of there. Yes, the flux and the solder will remove some of the oxide, but again, if you want to do a really first class job, you don't want a lot of flux and garbage. Uh, flux will lift off this oxide and leave it as a little black spot. You don't really want any more of that than necessary. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be back. I've cleaned my board. You want to make sure it's dry. I'll set it off to the side while I do the rest. Um, next step is to clean all of the solder leads. And I usually do that with a piece of sandpaper. And you want to get them pretty well. I've already done this a little bit. This is like my third take on this, so I've already uh, done them a bit. So you want to make sure you get all of those, get them well, make sure they're nice and shiny. Set that off to the side. You want to do the same for all of the leads of all the components. You want to go around them, get the uh, oxide off the leads. If you ever work with lead, like you ever have a block of lead, scratch it and it'll look beautifully shiny. It's really shiny stuff. But within an hour or two, it's starting to gray up again. That's because it really likes oxygen and it will, uh, it will oxidize very quickly. And you don't want that oxide on there when you're soldering. Yes, the flux will take care of some of it, but again, that's not, not first choice. Okay, so those components, uh, when you take things out of these tape strips. There's goop on the ends of the component. You want to make sure you get that off. Um, I usually just pull it through some sandpaper like this a few times, rotate it, pull it through, do that like that, and set it aside. And you just go through all the components. I'm not going to make you watch me do that, but you do anything you're going to solder, all of the leads, Everything that goes and gets uh, in contact with the solder, you want to clean that before you put it in the board. Let's do the uh, book work and then we'll do an example. Okay, uh, safety first. Always use proper safety techniques. Eye, face, hand protection, whatever you need. Work with proper ventilation. Solder, flux, release toxic uh, fumes. Lead and solder is toxic. Handle it properly. Dispose of it properly. With soldering, there's always possibility of burns, fire, shock, electrocution. I've got a really wonderful scar here that's 20 some years old. It's uh, about the size of a dime. It was not good. Um, and yeah, if you don't know, learn first or just don't do it. Okay, so serious stuff out of the way. Some prep and tips. First of all, you need to clean the board that you're going to be soldering and you need to clean the component leads. Yeah, that's, a, that's something you don't see a lot. People kind of neglect this. If those two things are clean, the solder is going to flow and stick much better. You're going to get a much more beautiful joint, much more reliable joint. You need to mechanically secure the component in place. And that means clamp it. I sometimes use a damp tissue, uh, press it up against something or use my finger. I'll use bent leads. I'll insert the leads and then bend them to hold it in place. The reason it's it's important. There's several reasons, but one of the reasons that you want to mechanically secure a connection is that 
after you're done soldering and you're removing the iron and the solder away from the joint, you do not want, you absolutely do not want the component to wiggle a little bit because you can get a cold joint. You, you want that solder to cool, harden uh, without it being wiggled or moved. Okay, clean solder and soldering iron. Well, this is a very common thing. Uh, something else you probably won't hear, use the thinnest solder practical to get the job done. It just takes less time to melt, less chance of you damaging the component or the board. Um, yeah, so thinnest solder practical to do the job. Use the correct temperature. You need to heat quickly, but you do not want to burn the board, burn the board or the solder. Uh, yeah, if you have a really hot soldering iron, you'll see the solder start turning like crusty. Yeah, it's, it's oxidizing. It should take two to three seconds maximum to get the solder to start to melt. And if it's longer than that, it's too cool. And too cool means you're gonna be dwelling on the part for too long a time. You're gonna damage the component, you're gonna lift the traces off the board. Lifting the traces off the board is not fun. I've had to repair those, it's, yeah, it's not good. If the soldering iron is too hot, it will start to oxidize the solder very quickly before you can actually get any good soldering done. And plus you can damage the board and the component. As a general rule, you wanna start, you wanna place your soldering iron at the beginning where the most metal is. So if you have really thick traces on the board or if the leads on the, on the component are really heavy duty, that's where you start. Start where there's the most metal. Get the heat transfer going. So that means you touch the soldering iron to that point. You add a little bit of solder to form a, a wet connection between the soldering iron and the component. And then you get that heat transfer going, get that uh, part uh, heating up. Then you slide from the most amount of metal down to the least amount of metal and as solder as needed. So I've got an illustration of this. If the solder melts too slowly, stop. Stop right now because if you, if you keep trying just to hold it in place and like five or 10 seconds go by, if you haven't damaged the component, if you haven't lifted a trace, you, uh, you, you can count yourself lucky. Let it cool down, change your process. Hotter soldering iron, clean the components, something's wrong. Um, when you're considering temperature and technique, you need to look at the copper trace mass. How thick are the tracings on the board. Uh, some of them are really heavy duty. If they're made to absorb heat, they're part of the heat sink. Uh, you need to look at the board quality because a good board can take a lot more abuse than a cheap board. And I'll show you that. Component leads. Are the component leads thin? Are they fat? Are they copper? Are they steel? Are they pre-tinned or not? So sometimes I have, uh, have used, uh, in fact, in one of my videos, I have uh, some resistors that have very thin leads. So I started soldering not at the lead, but on the board, and then I moved to the uh, lead. Okay, a low quality board, you heat the lead first. Yeah, because if you heat a cheap board too long, it's gonna lift the traces, it's very easy to do. If you hear a popping or snapping sound while you're soldering, stop, because it could be the flux. Chances are you're overheating the, the glue that holds on the tracing, and you're, if you haven't already lifted it, you're about to. Okay, solder should flow nicely, like water. Uh, it should flow down the lead or across the tracing. Uh, just, yeah, it should just flow very nicely. It shouldn't lump up or stop, and you shouldn't have places where the solder doesn't want to go, where it resists going. When you're done, the solder should be volcano-shaped, so it should look like this. And the sides curved inward. If you have a ball of solder, that's not good. That can hide a bad joint and you need to heat that up, slurp it away, uh, wipe it away, whatever you need to do. Okay. So this is a good board, and this is a bad board. A good board, you'll see it has high resin. It looks shiny, it looks plasticky, um, and you'll also note that the tracings are buried underneath this resin. On this cheap board, it kind of, it almost looks like cardboard. The surface looks like cardboard. It looks kind of dry. This one looks like plastic, and this one looks kind of dry. You'll notice that the copper traces are just sitting on top of the board and they're just glued on there. Yeah, so if you overheat this, that glue will release and you'll end up with that copper lifting off of there. And a lot of times you'll have your so the tip of your soldering iron stuck in this loop. You'll lift it up and without realizing, you'll just tear it right off of there. Okay, so you've been warned. Um, so this is the technique. Um, this is the 
component lead. This is the copper trace on the board. This is the solder over here, and this is the soldering iron. So what I usually do is I start here. You'll notice this is a heavy duty component lead. I start here a little bit off the board. I add some solder, I get this wet, I get the heat flow going between the iron and the component lead. Then I move down and add solder here. And when you are done, it should look like this. It should look like a volcano. Now, as it is as cooling, you do not want to wiggle it. You do want to let it cool, let it solidify. If you wiggle it when it's cooling, again, you will probably end up, or can end up with a cold solder joint, as they say, a high resistance joint. When you're done soldering, you want to take a look at it. And so this would be the raw version. This is the unsoldered version. This is a perfect solder joint. You'll notice the volcano shape. This is an okay solder joint. Um, this is, has straight sides to it, or they may be curved outward just a little bit. So that's okay. That's, you know, this is pretty typical right here. This one is a, is a maybe. I mean, if you got a ball like this, it may not be sticking to the lead. Uh, and if the solder does not carry out onto the copper pad out here, yeah, you just, you don't know what's going on. It may work, it may not. You'd be better off fixing this. And this is a definite no. This is an absolute definite uh, uh no. Because if you can see the hole underneath here, and if you get this dimple-like thing at the top, it means that the solder is not, not wanting to stick to the lead. It's actually being repelled by the lead, and this is probably also being repelled by the trace. Usually this is a sign of dirt, and that dirt is oftentimes oil. For good through-hole soldering, what you want to do is you want to start up higher on the lead like this, and get your thermal conduction going up here and then move down to the hole, add just a touch of solder, pull away and let it cool. And you'll get a perfect solder connection every time. Well, that's it for tips and tricks and techniques for through hole soldering. I hope you found it useful and interesting in your DIY electronics projects.